And from here, we'll do two more of these. So let me just rewrite this. We're looking for the greatest common factor to start. And again, look at your smallest number, see if that divides into the other two. And six does go into both of those. So I'm gonna factor out a six. You get x squared minus 30 divided by six would be minus five x. And 24 divided by six would just be positive four. Now we need to factor this quadratic. So I'm gonna write out the two binomials multiplied together. And I'll write out all four terms there that we need to find. And again, I'm just gonna rewrite FOIL since we're doing this reverse FOIL method. The first ones multiply to give you x squared. So that would just be x and x. The last ones multiply to give you this constant term, positive four. So let's write out the possibilities. What numbers can multiply to become positive four? That could be two and two one and four, or we can have the negative cases, minus one and minus four and minus two and minus two. Now from here, we need to deal with the outer and the inner terms. Let me use a different color, let's go with that. So the outer and the inner terms will add up to this minus five X. So looking at our possibilities for these two terms here, this one and this one, they have to add up to the coefficient on X, which is negative five. So out of these possibilities, it looks like minus one and minus four would work. So we'd put in minus one and minus four. Now, we think this is the right answer, but let's check it. So let me write that down. We're gonna check by multiplying this out. And really, we should check the six along the way. You know, if we redistribute the six, do we get back what we started with? The six x squared minus 30 x plus 24. And we do, so we know that the greatest common factor that we pulled out, that's correct. So I'm not gonna check that again, I'll just rewrite it. And then we'll multiply the two binomials using FOIL. So X and X gives us X squared. X and minus four would be minus four X. The inner gives you minus one and X, which is just minus one X. And the last ones, minus one and minus four would be positive four. And then these two middle terms do combine to give you minus five X. And since we got back what we started with, we know for sure that this is the right answer. So we can put that in our box up here. And let's just do one final question here. So I'll rewrite it. We've got minus three X squared plus six X plus nine. And looking for the greatest common factor of our coefficients and this constant term, we can notice by looking at the smallest number first, three does divide into all three of these. Now, you can also factor out the negative, which I would recommend, because we want the coefficient on x squared to be one. We wanna see one x squared plus something, because this is probably the easiest thing to factor. It's a little bit harder when there is a negative coefficient on x squared. So I'll factor out this entire coefficient here, this minus three. So you get minus three here, and actually let me rewrite that. And we're left with x squared, so six divided by minus three would be minus two X. Nine divided by minus three would be minus three. So notice these signs all flipped by pulling out a negative. Now from here, we can set up our two binomials. And also, honestly, you should check at this point. If you re-multiply the minus three, do you get back what you started with? And you do. Feel free to pause the video and verify that. Now. We have our quadratic and our two binomials multiplied together. So we use our reverse FOIL method. And we know that the first ones will give you X squared. So this would be X and X. And we know that the last ones give you minus three. So what numbers multiply to give you negative three? Well, that would be one and minus three or minus one and positive three. So we only have two options here since three is a prime number. And so our last step is to figure out the outer and the inner, which add up to this minus two. So which of these two combinations gives us negative two if we add them together? And that would be this one, since one minus three would be negative two. So we have plus one and minus three there. And we think that this is the answer. But of course, to know for sure, we have to check it. So this is... One of the key points 
or themes in all of math is that you usually or almost always have the ability to check your work. And so especially if you're taking a test or you need to know for sure if you're right, then you should get in the habit of checking. Because technically, you really don't know if this is right until you check it. Like, you think this is right, and in all likelihood, it probably is if you follow each step logically, but everyone is human, and humans make mistakes. So even people who have been doing this for decades will still make arithmetic errors because we're not calculators. So that's why you have to check your work. And so I'm going to remultiply just the two binomials. The minus 3, we'll assume we already checked. Or if you pause the video and checked it yourself, that would be great. Now, when we remultiply these out with FOIL, you get x and x, which is x squared. x and minus 3, which would be minus 3x. Plus 1 and x, which is just plus 1x. And plus 1 and minus 3, which would just be minus 3. And you can see minus 3x plus 1x does give us this minus 2x. So we can feel very confident that this is in fact the right answer.